Hello, everyone. This is Kyle Welch with RCI Wireless News. I want to thank everyone for attending today's webinar, The Evolution of Network Visibility Architectures, presented by Brocade. Our presenters today are Scott Heinlein, Marketing Director, Service Provider, Brocade, and Makun Srigopal, Product Marketing, Network Visibility, and Analytics at Brocade. At this time, I'd like to pass the presentation over to Scott. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Kyle, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Mukund and I are extremely happy to be sharing this information with you and hope you find it useful, and hopefully it will provide some good and interesting takeaways from you. Uh, before I begin, just want to spend a few minutes on Brocade and who we are in case you're not familiar with us. Uh, first off, Brocade is a market share leader in storage area networking. In addition, we're also a leader in Ethernet fabric technologies and are currently in about 90% of the global 1,000 data centers. Over the past couple of years, uh, we've realized the IP industry is going to go through a transformation, similar to the way data centers transformed with virtualization technology. So we've made recently some investments uh, specific in the virtualization area. Um, these investments um, are, are in specific technologies really to help our customers with this transformation. So over the past couple of years, we purchased network visibility and uh, I'm sorry, analytics technology, as well as uh, virtualized uh, routing, Evolve Packet Core or EPC, and Application Delivery Controller or ABC technology. And again, the reason we've done this is because uh, these technologies we believe is is, is really what our customers are going to need to make this transformation into this, into this new area um, of IP. And this is something that we and the industry is calling the new IP. So I want to quickly just set the context for the new IP. Um, but So I'm going to start off explaining what the new IP is, and then I'm going to toss it over to McCoon from there, and he's going to walk through uh, the growth of the service router analytics ecosystem, also talk a little bit about the evolution of the network visibility architectures. Um, and then he's going to talk specifically about more Brocade and the next generation visibility solution that Brocade has. And then lastly, we're going to review some of the network visibility case studies. Next slide. Thank you. So I want to just quickly set the context for the new IP, as we will be referring to it throughout the discussion today. So our industry tends to run in 20-year innovation cycles. Uh, the last major innovation cycle happened in the mid-90s with the IP and the internet wave, and it really fundamentally changed the way everyone did business, including you as service providers, enterprises, and also consumers. Now, with the rise of social big data cloud, and mobile, we are now at the forefront of what we believe is the next big meta cycle of innovation. So if you just quickly take a step back to the mid-90s, mobile was scarce. The internet was really just starting out. Web pages were mostly text-based, and IP networks were transforming the way that we conduct business. Equipment vendors really controlled a lot of what the service providers could do with their networks. Most vendors had proprietary interfaces, so there were really limits in what you could do with your network, who you could partner with for services, and really what additional devices could even be placed in the network. Now, if you fast forward 20 years, the underlying IP network is roughly the same as it was back then when the Internet was just starting. Equipment vendors still have a lot of control over the IP network. Devices are mostly proprietary and very difficult to innovate on, and you're typically locked in to a vendor when you need additional equipment. However, what has changed is that we now have billions of mobile devices on the network, billions of internet users and websites. So everything and everyone using the network has changed, but the IP network itself has not. So the IP network needs to radically transform to the new IP. And this is an IP network that is automated it's fast to innovate on, and um, it's able to transition the industry really until this, to this next wave of innovation with social, mobile, big cloud, and data. So the new IP is a platform that will help service providers establish these new business models. 
And at its very core, the new IP is a new way of doing business. It's really about transforming the way service providers uh, do business and participate in new markets. So we as Brocade really have four beliefs around what, what new IP means to us and what new IP means to our customers. The first one is around uh, the new IP is open with a purpose. And it's open with a purpose because um, it helps our customers keep pace with the rate of innovation. It reduces vendor lock-in and also reduces the overall cost and network complexity. The second belief is around innovation-centric and software-enabled. So this belief is centered on improving time to market and really the overall customer experience and customer value. The third belief is on ecosystem and then it's being ecosystem driven. And this provides the technology enablers to partner with third parties for innovative solutions and also enables external innovation. And then lastly, uh, the fourth core belief is your own pace in your own way. What this really means is that you can transform your business to the new IP at your own pace and, and in the way that you want to do it. So you choose how quickly or how slowly you want to transform it. Um, it's not up to anybody else. It's not up to your vendors. So you really have control over this. So the new IP enables rapid service delivery and unprecedented innovation. That's really at its core. Um, and in this transformation, we're going to see IP networks go from proprietary technology to open technology from legacy hardware appliances to software that's easier to innovate on, from static to dynamic environments, and from manual, mostly human-oriented tasks to automation of complex tasks. Um, and then also, you know, from slow innovation to being able to innovate in a fraction of the time. And these are really the core differences between what we've turned the old IP versus the new IP. And this will enable the delivery of the next big wave of, of business models, which include Internet of Things, machine to machine, um, and other mobile um, uh, technologies to end the transformation to the digital business. And these four core beliefs that I, that I uh, reviewed, um, it really provides the foundation for, for enabling these new business models. Thank you, Scott. A very good morning, afternoon, and evening to everyone in attendance. My name is Mukund Srigopal, and for the remainder of this hour, I'll share with you some transformative trends in the mobile industry that are driving a growing adoption of network monitoring and analytics tools. We'll also explore the role of a network visibility infrastructure, which mediates the delivery of traffic between the network and the operator's analytics tools ecosystem, and we'll look at the evolution of visibility architectures as mobile operators transition to the new IP paradigm. We'll then conclude with an overview of Brocade's innovations in mobile network visibility and, and review some key use cases. Any evaluation of the mobile industry has to begin with the ongoing exponential growth of mobile data. To quantify this growth, about 16 exabytes of traffic will be generated each month by the end of 2018, which someone described as the equivalent of a stack of fully loaded hard drives reaching up as high as the top of the Eiffel Tower from the ground. And machine-to-machine -machine traffic is only going to further incline the slope of the exponential data curve. Now let's look at some trends fueling this growth. In many regions, revenue from mobile data services has either already surpassed voice revenue or will do so in the not so distant future. The growth of smartphones fueled by growing demand, broader device and feature diversity and increased competition in the vendor ecosystem is a key driver of data growth. About a fourth of the mobile devices in the world today are smart devices. But this ratio is expected to invert in a couple of years, with the majority of feature phones being replaced by smartphones. Moreover, the demand for bandwidth-hungry content and always-on applications is forcing operators towards new network standards and architectures that will enhance network capacity and coverage and reduce capital and operational costs. As operators begin to deploy NFV-based infrastructure, Traditional telephone switching offices will transform into data centers that become the foundations 
of private service provider clouds. So what we're witnessing is, the, is that the world of telecommunications is finally beginning to merge with the world of platforms and infrastructures offered as services on the cloud. With such a paradigm shift, operators can chain together products from numerous vendors and offer hundreds of services that can be dynamically provisioned, monitored, and billed. Further, the introduction of NFV and SDN and Self-Organizing Networks, or SOM, will enable them to deploy thousands of non-RF access points and scale to tens of thousands of cell sites. This will enable them to support millions of mobile applications used by tens of millions of subscribers, generating hundreds of millions of gigabits of data traffic. And then there's going to be billions of machine-to-machine -machine nodes that will generate small chunks of traffic and frequent bursts as everything around us becomes connected and intelligent. So it's going to be a hyper-connected world as we move into the future. Now let's take a look at the economics of meeting the growing demand for data. In recent years, the revenue generated from a gigabyte of traffic in, in North America and Western Europe has been falling. This is due to increased competition and all-you-can-eat plans which cap revenue growth. The cost of delivering a gigabyte has been falling too but at a slower pace than the rate of decline of revenue. And this is creating a downward pressure on profitability. To stabilize and grow their profitability, operators need to increase their average revenue per user, or ARPU, contain subscriber churn, and lower their capital and operational expenses to reduce the total cost of delivering a gigabyte but there are several challenges to overcome. To increase their ARPU, operators need to offer differentiated value-added services. For this, they need to effectively segment their customer base based on usage patterns, demographic characteristics, and other parameters, and target plans or offerings to these granular segments. And they require tools that analyze operators' data assets to accomplish this. Mobile operators also need to meet the minimum service quality expectations of their customers to remain competitive, which becomes especially challenging as a growing share of latency-sensitive video and streaming traffic hit the network. They also need to effectively secure the networks and in, from intrusive DDoS attacks and advanced persistent threats as these attacks will only grow with growing traffic volumes. To overcome these challenges, mobile operators worldwide are investing in a growing ecosystem of monitoring and analytics tools that monitor usage, quality of experience, service performance, security, and also help identify new revenue streams. These tools may either be deployed in regional or operational silos, or they may be deployed centrally within the network. Most tools, with the exception of critical security and traffic shaping applications, are deployed out of band, meaning that they analyze replicated or regenerated traffic rather than operate inline in the path of network traffic. Out-of-band deployments mitigate the risk of network disruption but require additional networking infrastructure to operate effectively. This additional infrastructure, known as network visibility infrastructure, mediates between the network and the out-of-band tools ecosystem to deliver replicated upstream and downstream traffic flows. These flows are then curated to the individual needs of each monitoring tool. And in this section, we'll delve deeper into network visibility and the evolution of network visibility architectures for mobility, specifically focusing on network packet brokers.
Network packet brokers are scalable networking nodes that evolved from network taps, which either actively or passively replicate network flows, feeding them to a recipient of these flows through egress or monitoring ports. Taps, depending on their type, can both regenerate and aggregate traffic by either replicating flows on an ingress port to several egress ports or aggregating traffic from several ingress ports to a single egress port. While taps are good at passive replication, they lack the scalability, performance, and traffic optimization intelligence that operators need for their analytics infrastructure. Network packet brokers are scalable and flow-aware nodes that support traffic generation and aggregation between several ingress and egress ports simultaneously. They provide the performance, port density, and traffic intelligence that operators require to support extensive scalable analytics infrastructures. They also offer advanced traffic filtering capabilities to minimize and optimize the compute load on the analytics tools infrastructure. Network visibility architectures have evolved over time, and Brocade is playing a central role in driving this architectural evolution. The first generation, which is still widely prevalent, comprises of hardware-based network packet brokers that deliver traffic to hardware-based probes, which reduce or summarize traffic to feed the analytics infrastructure. Here, the operator ends up working with several vendors to acquire the packet broker, the probing infrastructure, and the analytics infrastructure, and there is limited programmability and functional separation in the packet broker architecture. The first generation of network packet brokers, which are still widely deployed, were a tremendous improvement over simplistic tapping and mirroring mechanisms offering much better scale and numerous traffic optimization capabilities. But as traffic conditions change, forcing networks to either evolve or break, and as monitoring and analytics tools begin to play increasingly central roles in the effective operation and monetization of mobile networks, these monolithic packet broker architectures just don't measure up. On this slide, we compare two such legacy packet broker architectures. In the first architecture, to the left, advanced traffic optimization and mobility functions are performed in special line cards or modules, and ingress traffic needs to be funneled through these special modules to be optimized. The number of these special traffic optimization modules that can be installed in a packet broker chassis are limited. The problem with this architecture is that with growing traffic, these special optimization line cards compete with ingress and egress cards for slots in the chassis, and this results in a zero-sum game. Further, the limited processing capacity of these specialized modules creates bottlenecks for scalability, necessitating the acquisition of additional chassis nodes to scale traffic optimization capacity. And this significantly impacts the total cost of ownership of the visibility infrastructure. The second visibility architecture that you see to your right introduces a specialized appliance for mobile traffic optimization functions, requiring mobile operators to simultaneously scale both the packet broker and the specialized hardware appliance as traffic volumes grow. The cost of scaling this architecture rapidly becomes prohibitive. And with both these legacy hardware-based architectures, new feature rollouts involve longer and, and more expensive release cycles, the impact of which are ultimately borne by their customers. These legacy packet broker architectures therefore fail to meet the growing needs of today's demanding mobile networks. The limitations of these first-generation packet broker architectures drove Brocade to create the next-generation network visibility architecture, where mobile bearer and control processing functions are separated to bring advanced mobility intelligence, efficiency, and scalability. This architecture uses a software-based controller deployed on commodity x86 servers outside of the packet broker hardware, 
which inspect mobile control traffic to dynamically and intelligently program traffic flows to the probing or analytics infrastructure. We'll explore this further in the next section where we'll talk about Brocade Packet Broker. In this segment, we'll talk about Brocade's next generation mobility aware network visibility solution. We'll take a look at the implementation of Visibility 2.0 architecture with a separation of forwarding and control functions in the Brocade Packet Broker solution. We'll also look at Brocade Packet Broker's product stack, different deployment architectures, and key forwarding optimization and mobility features. Brocade Packet Broker comprises of two layers of products, the forwarding layer and the control and management layer. The forwarding layer comprises of the MLXC series packet brokers, which is an industry-leading, high-density, high-throughput, scalable and programmable packet broker platform, and the ICX series traffic aggregators, which are high-capacity, wire-speed traffic collection and forwarding nodes. Brocade ICX and MLXC nodes are SDN ready, supporting open flow and open daylight frameworks out of the box. The control and management layer, known as the Smart Management Engine, offers a control module for mobility aware traffic optimization. It also supports API based dynamic flow policy programming, as well as a rich, intuitive graphical user interface for single pane of glass monitoring. We'll look at the forwarding and control elements in more detail in the next few slides. Brocade Packet Broker implements Visibility 2.0 architecture with the Smart Management Engine, which is a scalable software-based mobile control processing entity that runs on commodity off-the-shelf hardware. The Brocade Smart Management Engine monitors mobile control traffic and automatically maps the topology of the mobile network to enable advanced mobility-aware traffic optimization. The separation of forwarding and control processing functions provides resource and feature scalability. Unlike legacy visibility architectures, Brocade Packet Broker eliminates specialized modules and appliances that create bottlenecks and resource contention. This allows operators to exploit the full potential of the Packet Broker hardware which offers more than 15 terabits of processing capacity per second, high port density, and unparalleled performance. The presence of a software-based control layer allows analytics and management applications to modify flow policies in real time while reducing the time needed to roll out new features. The smart management engine brings advanced mobility intelligence, providing granular subscriber network and protocol-aware traffic forwarding capabilities. The Brocade Packet Broker hardware portfolio, as described earlier, comprises of the MLXC series packet brokers and ICX series traffic aggregators. The MLXC packet broker series provides more than 15 terabits of wire speed traffic processing per second with up to 6400 gig wire speed ports, 128 40 gig ports and 640 10 gig ports, as well as more than 1000 1 gig wire speed ports. It is available in 4, 8, 6, and 32 slot chassis form factors to support diverse capacity requirements for both centralized and distributed visibility architectures and supports a comprehensive set of traffic forwarding, optimization, and advanced mobility intelligence functions. The ICX series traffic aggregators offer up to 26 40 gig wire speed ports and up to 96 10 gig ports in a 1 RU form factor and also supports stacking for unified logical management of nodes. It supports critical traffic optimization features like timestamping and filtering. Both centralized and distributed network visibility architectures are supported by Brocade Packet Broker. In the centralized visibility architecture, ICX traffic aggregators aggregate traffic from across 
access and regional core networks and forward relevant flows to a centrally deployed MLXC packet broker ecosystem. MLXC packet brokers optimize traffic and deliver curated traffic flows to centrally deployed analytics and monitoring tools. The entire aggregation and packet broker infrastructure is controlled and managed by the smart management engine. In the distributed visibility architecture, regional or functional silos of the network maintain individual decentralized visibility and analytics infrastructures. The decentralized monitoring zones deploy MLXC packet brokers, which are managed by the smart management engine for traffic optimization, mobility intelligence, and single pane of glass management. And now we'll look at the types of traffic management and optimization capabilities offered by Brocade Packet Broker. Traffic regeneration, aggregation, and filtering are the foundational packet broker functions. Traffic regeneration involves the replication of traffic flows at an ingress or network facing port to one or more egress or tool facing ports. Traffic aggregation involves combining traffic at two or more ingress ports to one egress port. Brocade Packet Broker supports many to many regeneration and aggregation between ingress and egress ports on a single node. It also supports filtering of traffic flows based on source and destination IP address, source and destination ports, and the protocol associated with the traffic flow. With bidirectional flow mapping, uplink and downlink flows associated with a session are both delivered to the same port to enable complete session visibility. Brocade Packet Broker also supports dual IPv4 and IPv6 stacks both individually and simultaneously on the same visibility node. Let's now take a look at some traffic optimization functions. Timestamping involves placing a time signature on every packet at specified ingress ports to enable tools to detect the precise time at interception for performance monitoring. Port labeling involves labeling each packet with a marker that denotes the ingress port the packet came through. This helps monitoring tools determine, for instance, which network region, zone, or interface the packet originated from. Packet slicing involves truncating packets at a specified byte offset. This reduces processing requirements on the analytics infrastructure when all relevant information is available within a known offset. Advanced filtering, also known as flex match, enables pattern matching of up to 128 bytes of a packet with specified byte patterns. Port buffering enables buffering of ingress traffic when the rate of inbound flows exceed the capacity of the port. MPLS label stripping enables extracting MPLS labels from packets before forwarding them to tools. And finally, let's review some mobility-aware traffic optimization features supported by Brocade Packet Broker. Mobile networks introduce specialized control and barrier protocols that create the need for specialized mobility-aware network visibility to get the most out of your network monitoring and analytics tools. Mobile network packet brokers need to be subscriber, network, session, and protocol-aware and perform stateful traffic filtering and forwarding. Brocade Packet Broker offers smart network learning, a unique mobile feature that automatically maps the topology of the mobile network by analyzing signaling flows in real time. Smart network learning enables features like mobile flow deduplication, where duplicate underlying flows on mobile barrier interfaces like S5 and SGI can be filtered to improve monitoring efficiency. GTP and RTP correlation are powerful features that direct GTP and RTP control and user traffic associated with a subscriber session to the same instance of a tool. 
Offloading the correlation function from monitoring tools further optimizes the productivity of monitoring tools. Another advanced mobility feature offered by Brocade Packet Broker is IRAT Handover Aware Traffic Forwarding. IRAT Handover, which stands for Inter-Radio Access Technology Handover, typically occurs when a subscriber session is handed over from LTE to 3G access due to lack of coverage or in inadequate LTE signal strength. Brocade Packet Broker can detect flows impacted by IRAT hand handovers and forward traffic to the appropriate 3G or 4G monitoring tools as required by the operator. Now that we've taken an in-depth look at some key capabilities of Brocade Packet Broker, let's review some customer case studies before we wrap up. In this final segment, We'll review four customer case studies where mobile operators leveraged Brocade Packet Broker for their unique visibility needs. In the first use case, we'll look at how a North American Tier 1 mobile operator optimized its analytics investments to lower scaling costs by more than 25%. In the second use case, we'll look at how an operator leveraged Brocade Packet Broker's mobility intelligence for subscriber-aware traffic forwarding. In the third use case, we'll look at how an Asian operator proactively addresses customer experience issues to improve subscriber retention and drive revenue growth. And in the fourth use case, we shed light on Brocade Network Visibility's innovations with the ability to not just deliver traffic flows, but to reduce these flows into metadata that can be consumed by monitoring and analytics tools. The first case study addresses the scale and cost challenges as a result of the growth in mobile data traffic. Operators today are deploying a growing number of out-of-band monitoring tools, all of which require replicated traffic flows to monitor, analyze, or secure the network. But as data traffic continues its exponential growth, Operators need to scale the number of instances of each tool and traffic load has to be balanced across these multiple tool instances. The cost of scaling the tool's infrastructure quickly becomes unsustainable even as the role of these monitoring tools becomes increasingly critical to the effective operation of the network. This is highlighted in this case study where a tier one US mobile operator needed to monitor traffic generated by more than 20 million subscribers in near real time for security threats. To effectively scale the security monitoring infrastructure, the operator deployed Brocade Packet Broker, leveraging its whitelisting capabilities to discard known traffic sources like YouTube and Netflix, which represent a large part of the total traffic. The ability to pre-filter known and reliable traffic sources resulted in the security tool only having to inspect about 40% of all traffic. And this effectively reduced the number of tool instances that needed to be deployed. The productivity of the security monitoring tool was further enhanced by leveraging the GTP correlation capability of Brocade Packet Broker, which resulted in the correlation function being offloaded from the monitoring tools. The tools consequently received pre-correlated traffic, which freed up more than 20% of their compute resources that they could now deploy for their primary function. And this resulted in an overall reduction of the total scaling cost of the tool by more than 40%. In the second case study, we'll look at the need for intelligent mobility-aware traffic forwarding. For mobile networks, legacy visibility, visibility tools aren't adequate. Mobile operators need visibility tools that are subscriber, plan, protocol, and network aware to maximize the productivity of their monitoring tools. Subscriber awareness means seeing not just IP addresses, but the subscriber that the IP address is associated with, 
the plan that the subscriber has signed up for and whether this is a home or a roaming subscriber. Application awareness involves not just layer two to four protocol awareness, but the ability to parse mobile protocols to differentiate, say, video and voice delivered over an LTE network from less latency sensitive traffic like email or blogs. Network awareness involves knowing which base station is generating a given traffic flow, which sector the base station belongs to, which serving gateway the base station is anchored to, and so on. In this case study, a major mobile operator in the Asia-Pacific region offered prepaid tiered data plans. The operator needed to ensure that subscribers, especially of their top tier plans, received a high quality of service experience. The operator also needed a mechanism to verify the accuracy of its billing system in metering the use of its top tier subscribers. To to address these challenges, the operator deployed Brocade Packet Broker, which can not only detect subscriber identity, but can selectively forward only traffic associated with subscribers of the operator's top tier service plan to performance monitoring and billing solutions. The operator dynamically provisions Brocade Packet Broker periodically as subscriber and plan information change through a real-time provisioning API. This ensures that Brocade Packet Broker accurately forwards flows as new subscribers are added or when subscribers leave the network or change their service plans. The ability to forward traffic intelligently results in the operator being able to proactively monitor its top tier subscribers and also ensure that there's, there are checks and balances to prevent revenue leakage. The third case study highlights the growing need for real-time flow programmability for certain time-sensitive monitoring use cases like lawful intercept and customer service. The customer in this case study was an Asian tier one mobile operator who needed to program tool-bound flows in real-time. The customer had evaluated several network visibility solutions, none of which met the sub-millisecond programmability requirement before deploying the brocade solution. The operator was receiving a growing number of complaints from subscribers on service quality and, and was concerned about losing customers to competition if they were unable to address service issues quickly. Traditional monitoring mechanisms took too long to detect issues and were too human intensive, and this resulted in customer complaints not being resolved in time, which could in turn lead to higher churn and lost revenue. The operator was therefore looking for a way to enable call center operators to validate the subscriber's complaint when they received a service call before escalating issues. Having tried various alternatives, none of which proved provided the ability for the monitoring tool to request and receive traffic flows from the visibility infrastructure in real time, the operator then deployed Brocade Packet Broker to meet their performance expectations. With Brocade Packet Broker, the network monitoring tools could make real-time requests for service-specific flows and receive them all under one millisecond through a fast program programming API. This enabled customer service personnel to gain real-time visibility into the subscriber's service experience, determine whether the source of the issue was in the operator's network or in the subscriber's device or in the application they were attempting to access on the internet. The ability to address subscriber complaints in real time improved subscriber stickiness and reduced churn. And in the final case study, we'll look at the need for simplified mechanisms to deliver traffic metadata in diverse formats to big data analytics applications. Big data analytics applications don't process network traffic in its native form. They instead use protocol probes that parse and reduce traffic to generate metadata, which can then be consumed by a big data platform. The operators therefore have to acquire a visibility solution and a probing platform in addition to the big data application. 
Next generation visibility solutions should be able to deliver traffic in any form as raw packets, streamed or batch metadata per the needs of each analytics application. Rather than buy a different probing platform for each of the monitoring and analytics tools, operators should be able to leverage a single, fully programmable, flexible, and scalable network visibility platform to meet all of their visibility needs. In this case study, these requirements led the customer and the big data analytics partner to deploy the Brocade network visibility solution. The customer in this case study was deploying a popular big data analytics platform and was seeking an end-to-end -end visibility and analytics solution. The big data vendor had evaluated several alternatives before partnering with Brocade to deploy a comprehensive visibility solution alongside their analytics infrastructure. Brocade's visibility solution combined the capabilities of Brocade's packet broker offering and Brocade's software-based probing platform in an integrated, loosely coupled architecture. With the Brocade solution, the analytics application can dynamically program the software-based probing platform to request traffic metadata in diverse formats. The Brocade Packet Probing Platform can in turn program Brocade Packet Broker in real time to receive desired traffic flows. This dynamic automated end-to-end -end visibility architecture reduced integration complexity, cost, and the time to market for the key use cases enabled by the visibility and analytics solutions. And with that, we're at the end of this webinar. To quickly summarize what we've covered today, we looked at the role of the new IP in enabling operators to transition to open software-based architectures. And we looked at Brocade's role as a key driver in the transition of networks to the new IP. We looked at some key trends in the mobile industry, which are driving the growing adoption of tools that monitor, analyze, and secure the network. We then looked at the role of network visibility infrastructure in providing the efficiency, performance, and productivity of the tools ecosystem, and studied the evolution of network visibility architectures in response to the growing need for scalability, flexibility, automation, and real-time responsiveness. And we finally explored Brocade Packet Broker, looking at, at its architectural innovations, key benefits, features, and use cases. And with that, I'll hand it back to Kyle for questions. Thank you. Um, everyone, uh, we don't have time for too many questions. We'll get to one. But if you have any questions, please submit them into the control panel. And Makund, our presenter today, will get those. So Makund, I think uh, we have time for one question. So um, on slide 25 under key features, um, can you provide more information on flow deduplication and IRAT aware forwarding? Sure. So uh, flow deduplication is a mobility feature that's really unique to Brocade Packet Broker. And this is different from conventional deduplication in that it isn't about eliminating duplicate packets, but instead it is uh, a higher level function wherein the operator can optionally discard flows where the underlying payload traffic beneath the outer protocol wrapper is identical across two barrier interfaces. Um, an example for this is barrier traffic on, say, S5 and SGI LTE interfaces. And here, uh, Brocade Packet Broker can be optionally configured to detect that the same underlying flow is present in both these interfaces, and therefore the monitoring tool only needs one or the other. This saves the monitoring tool the compute that would otherwise be needed to process traffic from both interfaces and eliminate redundancy. And that said, uh, flow deduplication shouldn't be deployed if the operator isn't only interested in the inner payload, that is, if the monitoring tool actually needs to inspect both inner and outer protocol traffic on both interfaces. Um, I think the second part of the question was about IRAT handover awareness. So um, let's say you operate a 3G network and are gradually transitioning your radio access to LTE. 
chances are that you'll have regions or cells where the two networks or the two access networks overlap. And uh, typically when LTE is available, the device will connect to the LTE e node B unless either the subscriber's service plan or her handset does, don't support LTE. So you have a situation where your handset can connect to both LTE and 3G base stations, but is connected to the LTE base station because it gives you better bandwidth. Now say that the LTE signal strength becomes weak, or for some other reason, the network pushes you down from LTE to 3G access. So then your handset just experienced an inter-radio access or IRAT handover. So why are we talking about IRAT handovers? Um, now many monitoring tools monitor either LTE or 3G traffic, but not both. But some monitoring tools can process both LTE and 3G traffic. So depending on the type of tools the operator has deployed, and depending on what the operator wants to do with IRAT traffic, they can configure Brocade Packet Broker to detect IRAT handovers and forward handed over traffic flows to a specific tool. The ability to detect IRAT handovers is an example of a capability that requires advanced mobility awareness. And these are the types of capabilities that conventional IP network packet brokers don't offer. I hope that explanation was helpful. And uh, with that, I'd like to thank you for your questions and uh, thank you, Kyle, for the opportunity to talk about the evolution of network visibility architectures. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank everyone for attending today's webinar, The Evolution of Network Visibility Architectures, presented by Brocade. Again, our presenters today were Scott Heinlein, Marketing Director, Service Provider at Brocade, and Makun Srigopol, Mar Product Marketing Manager, Network Visibility and Analytics at Brocade. Thank you, Scott and Makun.